Good afternoon, everyone, and welcome to this valuable Power Retail webinar session brought to you today by payment solution provider Adyen. Thank you all for joining us. I'm Pranitha Govinda. I'm the editor of Power Retail, and I'll be introducing our guest speaker very shortly. Before the introduction, some quick housekeeping. Mobile phones, if you can please turn them to silent. I can't ridicule you if it goes off because I won't hear it, but that's besides the point. You probably want to pay attention this afternoon because it's going to be a great session. At the end of the presentation, we'll have time for questions. You can enter these at any time in the question dialog box on your dashboard, and we'll do our best to answer as many as we can. We've got a big session this afternoon, so get comfortable. Shoppers today want personalized, frictionless experiences online and in store. As a retailer, you need to deliver these experiences to keep your shoppers coming back for more. How do you do this? Unified Commerce. Today we have Michelle Van Alten, Country Manager for Australia and New Zealand at Adyen, who will provide more insight on Unified Commerce. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome Michelle Van Alten. Thank you very much for the introduction, Pranitha, as well as for inviting me to host this session today. Hi, everyone. Um, many thanks for joining and making the time in your busy lives. My name is Michel van Aalte. I'm the country manager of Australia and New Zealand with Adyen. I am Dutch, originally from Amsterdam, and feel very privileged that I've been given the opportunity to live in this beautiful country for the last few years. To get straight to the point, um, we see that there is a fundamental power shift happening in the world. In the old world, brands were more powerful than customers. Brands would control shopper experiences. Shoppers had to go in-store, make their selection from items in stock, get in line, and pay it to register. Technology has changed everything. Smartphones are now research and purchasing vehicles. Apps deliver goods and services instantly and conveniently. Payments are frictionless and often invisible. In this new world, customers are in the driver's seat. They choose how to interact with a brand. They expect convenience anywhere, anytime, but companies struggle to meet their expectations and usually disappoint the customer. Brands have to reinvent themselves or else customers will simply go somewhere else to get what they want. So some statistics you hear about nowadays are, are incredible. On Singles Day in China, seven and a half billion Australian dollars was processed in the first hour, seven and a half billion in just one hour. On Black Friday in the US, Nearly 80% of retailers' online traffic took place on mobile. So despite this wave of change, the technology um, is dominated by legacy systems with fragmented platforms that just don't work together, resulting in huge inefficiencies, geographical isolation, and channel isolation that leads to a poor user experience. Um, basically, the brands have to reinvent themselves or else customers will simply, will simply go, go elsewhere uh, to find what they want. So, some of the world's most successful companies are already taking a new approach. Top of mind are companies like Spotify, Facebook and Uber. Now we see that traditional brands are also reinventing themselves, including retailers such as L'Oreal, Coach and Nike. So, what's our story? Um, in 2006, a group of payment technology experts saw an opportunity. The payment space, with its legacy system and patchwork of providers, was ripe for innovation. So they set out to build a technology solution capable of meeting the rapidly evolving needs of today's fast-growing global businesses. To mark the new beginning, our founding team called the business Adyen, Surinamese for starting over again, and focused on building a frictionless, state-of-the-art infrastructure that connects directly to the card, to the card schemes and payment methods around the world, enabling businesses to accept payments from their customers and grow revenue online and in-store through one single system. After several years building the core technology, the advantage of working with a single partner and solution worldwide began to be recognized. We signed our first big global customer, Groupon, who we also helped into Australia at the time, in 2009. Uh, four years later, by 2014, we're processing 14 billion USD. Um, now fast forward to, uh, to last year, uh, where we processed 90 billion USD, nearly doubling year on year. We work for around 4,500 businesses globally, um, including Kogan.com, Freelancer, and MJ Bill, 
here in Australia. So what's the common thread we're seeing overseas and more and more in Australia? Um, clearly some companies are heading in a different direction, daring to take a different approach. These companies use technology that is empowering them to offer goods and services anywhere, anytime to their customers. So what if your shoppers were able to get a seamless customer experience, pay with their local payment preferences, receive loyalty in store and online? What if you were able to deliver what shoppers expect? Again, convenience anywhere, anytime. Would this be possible for, with fragmented leg legacy systems? So this is the only possible if you completely change the way of thinking. Think of the smartphone that works better than a combination of many different devices that we've used in the past. Similarly, we've built one modern platform that creates efficiencies. How are we doing this? By optimizing the value chain. So the value chain we see on top of this slide is the traditional value chain that still very much reflects the Australian landscape. There are typically more than four parties involved that all want to make money on the transaction that have different objectives and agendas. Data is spread over four companies or platforms with limited functionalities. The implications are a lack of control and visibilities for companies on how a transaction is delivered to, delivered to Visa and MasterCard. So there are huge inefficiencies in this model. Agen is able to eliminate complexity and, if, and, and inefficiencies by combining all functions in one platform. And yes, I'm, I am aware this might sound very technical, uh, but simply put, with one integration, companies are able to control and have visibility on their data and performance. So lastly, um, the Agen platform is the only single platform um, that's built from scratch. Uh, firstly, uh, we can ensure better performance. Uh, we have direct access to the card scheme data. We can adapt the format and route of each payment request in real time, ensuring the highest chance of approval, and with that, bottom line, your revenue. Secondly, we make it easy to let your shoppers move seamlessly from online store to your mobile app and physical store, which provides countless opportunities for shoppers building loyalty and increasing revenue. Thirdly, because we have full ownership over the entire payment flow, you will benefit from global reach while having the best in class best in class local solution. The best thing is you only need one contact, one integration and one point of contact being us. Rolling out different payment methods, countries or point of sale terminals is a matter of configuration. So enough about it then. Retail is transforming. Um, and to show this, I wanted to share the current landscape of the US retail, which I feel is also very relevant to the Australian businesses due to the arrival of global, global businesses locally um, after that, we'll then also have a look at their learnings. Retail sales are barely growing while retail space shrinks. Um, we're seeing more and more examples of retailers closing their brick and mortar shop to better concentrate on high performing locations and align its online and offline sales. They also call it the overstoring of America, as they say. This graph shows that the sales are stagnating over time while selling space is expected to decline. So yes, sales are indeed still going up, but selling, selling space simply can't, and on top of that, it's getting more expensive. So the bottom line here, retailers cannot only rely anymore on opening new stores for growth. And the growth that we're seeing that is actually happening is mostly coming from e-commerce. So we're looking at a 2% total growth of US retail, whereby 16% of that comes from e-commerce. So now let's look at the share of the online sales in the US. 42.7% is Amazon. The next 10 retailers being Best Buy, Apple, Nordstrom, iTunes, Walmart, Macy's, Target, Kohl's, Groupon, Etsy, 24.9% combined. Further to that, Amazon accounts for more than 51% of all e-commerce growth in the US. So that's 51 cents on a dollar. Lastly, mobile commerce has taken off. We've seen a growth of 48% in the last 24 months on our platform, and there are no signs of slowing down. So why do retail stores still matter? We 
we're increasingly seeing e-commerce player opening stores with great success. Amazon Go being the, class the classic example. First, we see brands coming from e-commerce into the physical space with heavy investments, proving that a physical presence is complementing the online presence, provided that the experience brought to the shopper is as seamless as online. By the way, if you're not familiar with Amazon Go, I highly recommend to look into it. It's the best case for fric frictionless payments out there today. Globally, nearly one in four electronic purchases have been made online since 2014, and the online share is growing. But even in that space, newcomers find good reasons to open up physical stores. For instance, Sonos. They only have one store for now, but it's all about experience. You can get in there, you're in a familiar surrounding, uh, being your kitchen or, uh, or a living environment. You can test new devices and hear the sounds before you actually decide to make the purchase. Looking at the statistics, the traditional store as a channel is equally important as the web. So the importance of channel in making a purchase. 72% of people think that store is still the key channel. Websites, websites come straight after. So how do gen Generation Zers prefer to make their purchases? Um, after all, these will become our, uh, our consumers in the years to come. So what's, what's their preference? Is it calling by phone using an app? web browser or, sh or shopping in-store. We see here that 98% of them prefer to purchase in-store, but do like to mix and hop channels. It's all about convenience. So one thing is clear, the expectations are changing. One of the reasons why the border between customer present and customer not present tends to blur is the expectation for new types of services and interactions. For example, a majority of shoppers like to have a confirmation of the existence of a product before they go in store. Triggering journeys like reserve online, purchase in store. Two thirds of the shoppers are less likely to buy from retailers unable to confirm local product availability. And well, let's be honest, why go all the way to CBD if you're not sure the product, the product is available? And Bonobos perfectly illustrates this type of journey. Uh, Bonobos is a very fast growing apparel brand that started online and initially opened physical stores as a showroom. Now they've moved into real stores, proposes free e-reservations for try upon appointment in store, um, free delivery at home and free return in store. So besides offering a seamless experience across all these channels, being able to, uh, being able to allow shoppers to hop seamlessly from one channel to another is also a good way to increase business. So, for example, 49% of shoppers that engage on 10 channels or more, yes, I agree, it's a lot of 10 channels, shop at least once a week, whereas 52% of those who engage on less than four channels shop less than once a month. Why? Well, as it ensures a live and direct connection with the shopper. So, unified commerce, um, is it a holy grail? And, well, maybe to start, so why unified commerce and not only channel? Well, some might see it as only being the new buzzword around, but it's, to us it's really about removing segmentation and creating seamless journeys for your shoppers um, and staying in touch with them throughout. So what type of unified, unified commerce journeys are we looking at? Um, I wanted to go through a couple today. Um, click and collect, endless aisle and mobile. So let's start with Endless Isle. Endless Isle eliminates out of stock issues by serving up your entire inventory to customers via in-store kiosk or tablets. Uh, they can pay for the item with an in-store online transaction, which reduces the chances of losing a sale, while also creating greater opportunities for upselling. So this is Jean-Pierre. He's browsing in-store at his favorite department store. He's about to spend a lot of money, so he's inspecting every millimeter of this shoe. Everything is right, except the color. So as mentioned before, selling space, and with that location stock, is decreasing. Um, as you don't have all colors in store, luckily the sales assistant is there to show Jean-Pierre all options online. So Jean-Pierre picks 
uh, picks a new color for a shoe being brown and continues his busy life. The shoes are delivered at home and he's ready for his job interview tomorrow. And well, maybe next week when Jean-Pierre decides to buy the gray ones too, he saw earlier in store, his card details have been stored and can be automatically retrieved, making repeat purchases a lot easier. So a great example here uh, would be Nike, um, transforming a traditional shopping experience to a life experience. We're now looking at one of our stores in, in New York, by the way. We're seeing our shopper on the left. He's shooting some hoops. Well, actually, he's not only shooting hoops, he's also buying the pair of Air Jordans he's wearing. Uh, you can he can try them out. And at the same time, uh, Nike is creating a hype and excitement for the customer. On the right, we see our sales assistant. I'm not too sure if he's, if he's actually blocking, uh, blocking any balls here. But anyway, um, from, a, from a payment perspective, um, you're interacting with the sales assistant on the basketball court while he's taking away friction of the payment through the mobile terminal he's holding in his left hand. So click and collect is probably the most common in Australia. Um, this is Mariah. She's on holiday and is staying in an Airbnb. She's been invited to a cocktail party by, by her Airbnb host and is searching for a dress online. She found her dress. She selects and buy it and on her way to the store, she's wondering if the one pair of shoes that she brought on holiday being, being sneakers will be the right match for this particular dress. Well, clearly, you did, well, clearly they, are, they aren't. Over 30% of customers that pick their item up in store make an additional in-store purchase of $75. Well, there's always something that sparks the eye when you're in store, right? A great example here would be Coach. Coach provides customers with the flexibility to check local store inventory, viewable on an embedded map before entering the checkout process. So the last journey I wanted to, uh, wanted to discuss today is, is mobile. So this is Andy. He's on his way to the airport on his bike uh, because he's Dutch. That's what we Dutch people like to do. He's actually visiting his girlfriend in London later that day, but forgot to buy her a present and wants to buy her favorite perfume from her favorite, favorite store in the city center. He receives a notification that the item is in, store, in, is in the store nearby. Pays in app, transferring the basket to point of sale and spending up to 9% more in store. So Andy's on his way to the airport. Um, he parked his bike and is now waiting for his flight. He decided that he's going to treat himself too. So this slide is an example of our customer KLM Airlines. To them interacting with the shopper the way they want is, is, the, is the way they want to interact with their friends, being convenience again. KLM is very strong in building a relationship with their customers through social media. And he reaches out to KLM and they send a payment link for his upgrade to business class. Because Andy is Dutch, as we've seen in this example, he's been shown his preferred payment method, Ideal. So Ideal is crucial in the Netherlands, um, representing up to 75% of checkout. I'm showing Ideal now because I'm a proud Dutchie, but do totally understand that this is not relevant to your particular business. Um, the point here, the point I want to make, is that not offering local payment methods will cost you business. So. What, what might be local payment methods that, that are very relevant to your business and that should definitely be in scope right now? So quickly about Australia. Australia is a very heavily card dominated country. Um, on average, an Australian has 3.2 cards in their wallet, being mainly MasterCard, Visa card or Amex. Well, in the contrary to Australians, the Chinese, they prefer to pay with different payment methods. So the ones that should be on your radar definitely include the following. WeChat Pay, Alipay, and Union Pay. Don't think this needs a lot of explanation. The numbers basically speak for themselves. Um, if you look at 2016, we've seen over 1 million Chinese visitors coming to Australia with an average spend of somewhat over 6,000 Australian dollars. 
So this equates to a small seven billion Australian dollars for the for the economy. If we then look at our neighbors in New Zealand, Chinese are the second highest number of visitors out of any country after the Australians. China is expected to contribute 37% of total international visitor growth and 51% of total visitor spending. So again, crucial and key here is making sure um, you offer them the right and relevant payment methods. The global numbers here are staggering. Um, we're looking at WeChat Pay and Alipay here. WeChat Pay, 700 million active users with 200 million cards registered. Alipay, 270 million active mobile users and 170 million transactions a day and growing. So for businesses that are already selling across border um, or are expanding outside of Australia or have future plans to do so, um, offering a local payment method strategy is key. Um, there are over 250 relevant payment methods globally. So make sure you can accept money from your customer in their preferred payment method and currency. Other factors that come into play here are, of course, cost. Um, is it possible to do a refund, um, chargebacks, and also recurring? Um, these can all determine if this is the right payment method for your business. So look at a payment provider that can facilitate all of these to reduce, to reduce technical overhead, but at the same time, offer you insight to global trends and ensure, and ensure you have the right mix of relevant payment methods for all channels. So this, this image shows again that cards are not dominating in all markets, especially if you look at Europe and Asia. So payment methods also realize they need to tailor to the evolving shopper expectation. So ensuring you're always ahead of the curve is instrumental. So the key here is get ready for any time, any, anywhere shopping. I hope to have given you some insight in the changing landscape of retail and at the same time provided some food for thoughts with regards to the opportunities that come within. Looking forward to create a new chapter in Unified Commerce together. Over to Pranitha. Thank you, Michelle, for a very insightful um, presentation. I certainly learned a lot about Unified Commerce this afternoon. We've got a few questions um, queued up for Michelle. Um, the first one is, um, we have stock that we want to integrate into your website, but we haven't found an avenue or app that can readily deliver the traffic. How do we do, um, drive traffic without paying a fortune for SEO? So I would I would happily answer this uh, this this question in 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 a separate session if that's possible. Um, we we do definitely have a lot of learnings here in how you can cost efficiently um, get there. Um, but being careful of, of everyone that's listening in, um, I would take this offline if possible. For sure, I'll send you the details of the um, question. Um, Thank you very much. Next question: What are some of the latest uh, mobile commerce trends that you are seeing at Edian? Oh, that's a very good question. Um, so I think one of the most um, innovative payment technologies uh, we're seeing, of course, is zero click, um, which takes which takes place of a place in the background uh, without any action required required by the customer. Um, I think the best example here is Uber and the way how they are accepting their payments. Uh, when passengers take an Uber, um, they don't need to take any specific action for the payments to be made. Everything happens in the background. Um, I think uh, these, these kind of frictionless connectivity brings businesses closer to their customer and that will definitely spread, uh, spread rapidly and further. Excellent. Thank you. Um, we've just got a question come through from Tommy. Um, he wants to know, when will Adyen be able to accept payment by Union Pay, WeChat Pay and Alipay? Um, so for uh, Union Pay, we already accept we accept we accept all payment methods um, already. So that's an easy answer. Okay, perfect. Um, next question: There are lots of competitors in the payment space, many of them based in Australia. What um, differentiates Adyen from these others? Um, well, all of these successful companies do what they do very well, 
Um, and in many ways, we, we share the same philosophy, um, leveraging technology to, to, to create payment innovations that simplify the process for merchants. Um, the, however, there are a couple of major differentiators. Um, at Adgen, our philosophy has always been to globally connect directly into the payment methods, um, delivering much higher quality and efficiency for the customer. Um, secondly, I would say we also connect to all key local payment methods around the world, uh, which makes it happy to which make, which makes it easy to expand into new markets. Um, on top of that, um, we're after all we're talking about unified commerce today. Uh, we're the only company that offers um, a single platform for e-commerce and in-store. All right, uh, we've got one more question here. Um, what do you think uh, of the increasing number of Chinese shoppers? Um, what can we do to get more of their business um, in Australia? So I think I think it touched upon upon that earlier. Um, I think it's 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 crucial um, to offer um, to offer the Chinese where Mar where Master Visa and Amex only have a uh, say a minor penetration in the market to offer them the the, the right payment method and the, the preferred payment method. Um, so we, um, as the first question of Tommy, um, it's crucial that you that you offer um, the likes of UnionPay, WeChat, and Alipay. Um, if you haven't looked into it yet, um, I can I can highly highly recommend uh, highly recommend to do that right now. All right, um, we've got another question here, Michelle. Um, will Adian be expanding to have physical merchant facility? I'm sorry, can you repeat that question? Will Adyen be expanding um, to have a physical merchant facility? Um, I, I, I'm afraid I need a little bit more explanation on, on this question to understand what the physical merchant facility means. Oh, he means actually a, a, a physical terminal. Um, so we've, we, we, we are, um, so Adyen has its own acquiring license, not only for e-commerce, but also for point of sale. Um, so we we are currently already rolling out uh, point of sale terminals in the Australian market. Um, I'm afraid I cannot cannot announce uh, announce any names yet, uh, but we'll soon uh, soon release press releases uh, to share this with uh, with the Australian retailers. All right, that sounds good, Michelle. Um, I think that's all the time uh, we have at the moment. But um, yeah, thank you so much. Uh, everyone for joining us uh, for this insightful and valuable web webinar. The video will be um, available online soon. Um, and uh, please sign up to your newsletter if you haven't already for any upcoming webinars that could be of help um, to you at Power Retail. Um, so thanks very much, guys. I'm signing out now, but um, I hope you all have a lovely day and a lovely week as well.